Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Somus Banerjee. And in this video lecture, we want to talk about the phase contrast microscopy. In this series of lectures, we have been talking about the types of microscopy techniques. We have talked about the bright field microscopy and we know it's easy to use, but we need to color the specimen to visualize that. Then we use dark field microscopy. The advantage of dark field microscopy is that you can visualize sample without staining them. But the contrast you get in the dark field microscopy is better than that of the bright field microscopy, but it's still not up to the mark. So now we are going to talk about a third type of microscopy that is known as the phase contrast microscopy. And in this phase contrast microscopy can give us very crisp, clear details of the overall structure and shape of the organism or the specimen that we are looking under the microscope. So phase contrast microscope will give us the room to watch subjects or specimen without staining them. So we can see transparent samples without staining them. And second thing, we can get a very crisp and very contrasting image from the background. How exactly phase contrast microscope works? This video is all about that. So remember, if you recall the last lecture of dark field microscopy, we have talked about a specific type of filter which is added to a bright field microscope to convert it into a dark field microscopy. Now that filter is known as annular ring. I haven't mentioned the name there, but it is known as the annular ring. If you recall the structure of the dark field microscopy and the steps of the dark field microscopy, it is something like that. Let me draw that for you. So in dark field microscopy, we started with the source, the light source. And right after the light source, normally in bright field microscopy, we have the condenser and uh, then we have the sample specimen then we have the objective then we have the ocular eyepiece so these are the steps condenser stage where the specimen is placed and then we have the objective and then you have ocular so this is how they are arranged but in dark field microscopy we put this annular ring here right between the light source and the condenser diaphragm this is where it is and it looks something like this where we have slits because if you look at the three dimensional shape it looks something like this in the 3d mode the annular ring looks like this okay and the surrounding portion is totally black and made up with materials which will not allow any light to pass. Okay, the shaded region will not allow any light to pass. So they will absorb the light and the blank material, blank region you can see is made up with such a material that will allow the light to pass through it. Okay, so there are these two types of uh, material used to make this annular ring. So the side view of annular ring something like this where the blank are the places from where the light can pass. Now this is uh, the setup for the dark field microscope. Now we are converting the dark field into a phase contrast with one more addition to the microscope. And that addition is along with annular ring we put what is known as a phase plate. And where we put the phase plate, phase plate between this objective and ocular or you can say the objective and the camera or the projection where we are going to see this uh, the image. So this is where we have the phase plate. And what this face, face plate looks like? Face plate also is composed of slits like this. It is also made up with two material. One will allow the light to be absorbed. I mean not absorbed exactly but uh, actually the face plate is little different from the annular ring because the annular ring will not allow, the shaded region will not allow any light to pass. They will absorb all the light. But this face plate, there are these two components of a face plate. If I draw it again here, the face plate also looks something like this. Shaded, very similar to that of this annular ring. But the difference is that again two materials are used. One is the dark colored and one, of, one is the light colored. The dark colored material will allow the light to pass very slowly. Where the blank region will allow the light to pass fast, okay, without any problem. So that's the thing. Now why we use another phase, uh, extra component which is known as the face plate. So this is phase 
plate. Why we need to use a phase plate? Let's talk about that. Now imagine the very first thing about the bright, uh, I mean the dark field microscopy is that the light is coming from here. So normal light ray, okay, and the light ray they are moving inside like this, okay. And this is the sample where they are actually in place and from this sample the light move like this okay from there this so this is a normal way of dark field microscopy if we draw that okay so the light and you imagine that the light ray is coming from the light source but blocked by the dark material in here so no light present here in the middle only the light ray coming from the sideways are moving sir, and hitting the sample or the stage with the sample no sample no light diffraction because if there is no specimen nothing is there to diffract the light ray so all the light ray are concentrated and they are going to move in the same direction towards objective and via objective they will reach the ocular now the thing is why objective that same ray is moving and that ray will move into what this face plate is in the place right if face plate is present now imagine at this point so they will move something like this the slits are present so this is a total background light that is moving through the face plate now the thing is the face plate is arranged in such a way so that it will allow this background light which we also call as a surround wave or surround light to pass through the light colored region okay or, or the light material that will allow the wave to pass through it got it if there is no sample still it will pass through it and what we see in the in the microscope is a little bit of light it's not like it's a mostly in back black background but it's not that black like a dark field microscope if there is no sample present in a dark field microscope the background seem totally black but in case of face contrast it's not that black little amount of light is still there because of the face plates presence and face plate will allow the uh, surrounding light to pass through it because the surrounding light can easily pass through this uh, light color material okay so if no sample is there surrounding wave or s wave will pass normal okay now the thing is if there is sample if sample is present then diffraction will be there if sample is present here let me draw a sample if there is a sample that then diffraction diffraction of light diffraction of light from the sample now due to the diffraction of light there are two waves now created one is the surround wave another one is this diffraction wave d wave we combine of these two waves are known as the p wave right now think about it in when the sample is present diffracting light is produced which is known as the d wave now the thing is this d wave and s wave there are two waves surround light and the diffracted light now our goal here is to bring up the const, uh, the contrast of the specimen right how can we achieve that as the d wave and s wave both are produced remember one thing the d wave are scattered wave they are moving in the sideways so as they are moving in the sideways now think about it let me uh, zoom into this this part so this is this is how the face plate looks like okay Two slits means made up with materials where the light can pass and these regions the light cannot pass so the thing is the face plate is arranged in such a way that the light which is coming from surround wave can easily move through this and they can reach the camera or the eye through the eyepiece so this wave is the s wave it can easily pass through that but the diffracted wave the diffraction occurs at higher angle the angle if we consider the angle the higher angle the diffraction occurs so this wave will not make it through the transparent region of the face plate 
so they will be blocked by this hazy medium they will be blocked by this part of the face plate where it will be blocked so as this diffracted wave or d wave are blocked d wave will still move but they will move slowly while the s wave moves if we draw the wave as a wave pattern then we can write this s wave move fast okay s wave move fast s wave move fast and d wave move slowly so as a result of which what happens a phase contrast a phase contrast is created contrast of phase that means the two light waves diffracted wave and surround wave they have a contrast to each other one reaches early one hit the detector early the other one reaches later as a result of this differences in the diffraction pattern of different portions of the cell we are going to see the surrounding portion of the specimen to be very bright a ring of bright color uh, or and and the center point to be dark so as a result of this bright and dark bright and dark it gives us much greater contrast so think about contrast what is contrast when you see any of this computer screen and the image editing software you see the contrast is always portrayed something like this this is contrast this means half light half dark so this is what's going on with this face plate because face plate can separate the phase of the two ray that are hitting the face plate due to the building concept of face plate in such a way right so as a result of which what we can say is that the d wave reaches very slow s wave reaches fast and the result of which the phase contrast and the phase contrast sometimes can be like this so if you write it like d wave and s wave you can see that one of these wave move like this and let's say d wave moves like this if they move in the opposite direction we call that wave to be out of phase to one another it may also happen that the movement can be like this two waves are moving like this same known as in phase so if the wave are moving in the same direction we call it in phase in the opposite direction out of phase it may also happen that they can be slightly out of phase or totally out of phase so normally this phase plate is used to distinguish and create a phase difference of 90 degree or we can say one fourth speed differences or slowing the d wave or diffracted wave one fourth of the time can achieve uh, a greater contrast from the background and the specimen and that greater contrast will help us to visualize the shape of and the structure of the specimen very clearly and we can distinguish that very clearly from the background that is the beauty of a phase contrast microscopy that's why this phase contrast microscopy can give us clear data clear picture of the specimen here is one picture of showing you the difference between a same sample taken a picture with the light microscope or bright field technique then a dark field technique and then a phase contrast technique and you can clearly see the difference the phase contrast gives us the best contrasting image with much greater details about the shape and structure of the specimen compared to the dark field and the bright field bright field this is unstained so we cannot visualize them properly but if you stain the specimen then bright field works quite well but in in response to know the structure of the uh, of the specimen and, and and the extremities of the specimen of their shape always use dark field even better to use phase contrast microscopy right so that is all about the phase contrast microscopy i believe you understand this mechanism very well right so if you like this video please hit the like button share the video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more of these microscopy videos uh, in the next uh, few weeks thank you everyone